you go feel the vibe. My experience, you go feel the vibe. Tell them, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, feel that experience. Oh, do bring that experience, so link and vibe with the experience. This week on Experience with Odu. I make bow ties, handmade bow ties. I produce it, cutting, measuring, trying to do the qualitative analysis of the bow tie to fix varying neck sizes and also paying attention to the event, colors, color formation, the specifics and everything, putting it together so that the people might have a good day with it. Plus, I made sure wherever, whatever I was wearing, it is prim and proper. Hmm. properly tailored, detailed, so if it's bow tie or whatever, wedding, if it's shirt, I make sure this shirt, the groom has to wear the shirt this way. On Experience with Odum today, a star consultant and men's bow tie couturier, Joe Pesky. So you're welcome to Experience with Odum. Today, I have with me a star consultant and a men's bow tie couturier. He's in the person of Joe Pesky. Yeah, so, um, until we get straight into this interview, let's go for a quick breather and when we come back, we'll dive straight into the interview. So you welcome back from this short breather. Yes, like I said earlier, today I have with me a style consultant and a men's bow tie couture. We'll be able to say a men's bow tie couture. I'm not saying you know. Yeah, but um, that's why we have him here. We'll dive straight into it. Right about now. You're welcome, boss. Hey, thank you, sir. Vinya. Shiache. Shiache. Great. It's good to have me. Thank you. Uh, I mean, you um, we appreciate that you have time out of your busy schedules to be here too as well. Uh, yes. Um, one will ask. I mean, a lot of people don't might not know you. A lot of people might know you. I mean, those who happen to be in the fashion industry, those who happen to be at a lot of weddings, um, know you, but Today be, might be the first time someone is seeing you. Of course. So who is Joe Pesky? Okay, um, basically Joe Pesky um, is a brand. Joe Pesky is a brand and it's mainly constituent as Joe Pesky Consortium and Joe Pesky Bota. Joe Pesky Consortium is into styling. Uh, styling and Joe Pesky Bota is a men bow tie couturier brand. When I say couturier, we I make bow ties, handmade bow ties. I produce it, cutting, measuring, trying to do the qualitative analysis of the bow tie to fix varying neck sizes and also paying attention to the event, colors, color formation, the specifics and everything, putting it together so that the people might have a good day with it. So that is your pesky. Basically, the two. Going around, 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 around my academia lives, reading and everything, I realize I'm somebody I pay attention to what I wear. Uh, you understand? I love the art of looking good. And it started carrying me about and trying to build value around the fact that I'm interested in what I'm putting on. Because there's a saying that whatever you don't have, you can't impart it on people. Um, yeah. Get it. I get it. Um, that's, that's, that's to say that you, you, you strive yourself from your, your inner self, who yeah. you are. So, whatever you do, you're considering your personality first of all. Yes, of course. Then you, you bring it out because appearance, yeah. people, people treat you based on appearance. Yeah. And that is what you have, you have come to do um, in these recent times. You as a person found out that because you like Jason and your friend who had seen you, so it's from the realization of somebody's um, uh, notice on how good you dress and all that. So is that how it started with you as an artist or stylist? Okay, um, all right, so beginning it all, I started with my friend, um, he's also a fashion designer, Michael, he's, his brand is Mason Hardman. Um, I was with him, Mr. I Hardman. signed he does Mason suits. Hardman, he does suits, yeah. yeah, he does into suit making. So, 
we are like more than a decade friend. We went to the same university together. So when he started his brand, I was there promoting it. So long as I look, I, I want to look good, I made sure I wear his suit to all events I was going so that it can promote the brand. So through that, I realized something about me. That's what I said right now. That yeah. you also have to, you always have to look at the industry, yeah. find something which nobody is doing. Yeah. And I studied the classic bow tie pieces because 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 I had passion in dressing. Um, I made sure whatever whatever I was wearing, it is prim and proper, hmm. properly tailored, detailed. So if it's bow tie or whatever. Weddings. If it's shirt, I make sure this shirt, the groom has to wear the shirt this way. I ensure that. So, um, unconsciously, something has already started, which I had no idea. Because sometimes he do the suit, he has to go and start them. He's busy. Joe, fake this one for me. So, I go. I make sure they look good. Mm. Normal like trigmatics weddings, stone boys weddings, circle dears, women's mm. and all that. You see, so unconsciously, someone like Jesu too, I did the same. Mm. So un unconsciously, I was I started something. So uh, yeah, um, you you mentioned some people, you know. Yeah. I will come to those personalities because yeah. Um, you know you, you did a lot of stuff. How they how you came into contact with those personalities? Yeah. Um, I know it didn't just happen it like that. It didn't just happen. Yes. So we would, we would come to that point where it, it happened for you with bow ties, with uh, Stalin, Lewis. All right. Um, so I was just there and something just told me that, okay, let me just do bow ties. So I just went on the internet, just type bow tie. When I, Instagram, for instance, I didn't see nobody doing bow ties in the industry. Mm -hmm. I hope you understand. Yeah. Nobody was doing exceptional bow ties in the industry. So mm -hmm. with a skill, with what I've studied, the meticulous way of crafting it and making it look darker and it's satisfying all the, all, all the dimensions and I mean, the satisfied features mm -hmm. of a, quality, a good bow tie, yeah. internationally well accepted one. I've learned all of that. When I saw that, I just told my friend that do a little for me. This is it. Was, ah. So when I post the logo, people were laughing at me. You know, ah, why would I? Mm -hmm. And people were like, why would I? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, uh, I mean, it's in, in our, the part of our world, yeah, yeah, yeah. you ask why you have to do a bow tie. Yes. Yes. I mean, we are, we are used to the fact that, oh, yeah, we'll go to the market, we'll go to the boutique. Yes. Then we would just buy like, a bow tie. Yes. You know, and just, well, we, are, we are done. So I was moved. One thing that inspired me was that I'm a bespoke person. I like tailored outfits. You're, you're, I, I mean, your, your outfit is yeah. clear. Yeah, I, I like bespoke, perfectly good silhouettes. So um, I also thought it wise that we have a lot of fashion designers in Ghana, but there is one common mistake most of them are doing. If you are doing a bespoke piece, a bespoke suit, you have to do a bespoke bow tie for your client. It doesn't correspond well when you do a bespoke piece and then you go in for an already pre tied bow tie for. Last weekend I start my, I had um, so far 130th um, memory in groom styling weddings in Ghana. For so you know what, uh, 130th <laughs> st yeah. styling in groom After 130 grooms, that's at the last week, last Saturday, yeah. Great. 130 so grooms so far. Would, would, Each would, other weekend is booked. Minimum three events in a weekend. Wow. So we'll, we'll, we'll delve into it because you're you talking about bow ties and all that. Yeah. Um, the reason why I cut you short with that okay. is that um, I'd want our viewers to actually see the kind of bow ties you're talking about. Okay, all right. And how you, um, you, you, you craft it. Oh, okay. You know, so that they see, they see on set. Okay, the, the it's, a, it's, a, it's a handmade bow tie, yes. self tied. And I can demonstrate how. Yes. I mean, so the kind of bow ties you are actually talking about. Maybe yes. Probably yes. somebody's thinking about the one we just buy. Yeah, 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 so yeah I know. Let, let's let's go on a very um, short commercial break, and when we come back, 
would would go straight into the bow ties and all that. So stay tuned with me and um, enjoy um, this ride. You go feel the vibe. Experience. You so you welcome back from the shot, Peter. Um, Joe Pesky earlier was telling us about how the essence of grooming, um, where he started from, the importance of styling to his brand, and how important it is for us to consider the effect of appearance because that is what it describes you the first time when someone meets you. He's into bow tie, men's bow tie. And many of you might think that, oh, it's just our normal bow tie that we wear. Uh, earlier, he made some submissions that when we are talking about vintage, when we are talking about um, bespoke, it's not just about any tie. Now, when I was to talk about bespoke, you consider every detail part of your appearance. So today, on Experience with Odum, we are going to look at the, the types of bow ties and um, how he does all these things so that we learn from it um, as men too as well and as women too if you want to get your husband um, a vintage or uh, a better still a bespoke bow tie you will contact your pesky and you will learn a few things from the show too as well so uh, boss so um, uh, thank you um, I think I have uh, pieces of my works here and um, this is the velvet piece. And this is the, um, the satin piece. This is a velvet too as well. And this one is um, a pattern piece. What I have here with me here in my hand is the oversize. It's kind of, it looks a bit bigger. Yeah. Uh, it looks a bit bigger. Yeah. Uh, this one, I mostly do this one for people with broader faces and bigger bodies. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't advise, I wouldn't use this one for somebody who is very tiny looking yeah there are two ways you can tie it you can tie it on your hand and fix it or you can actually put it on you but today i would like to tie it on me on my hand and maybe i'll tie it on you okay. <laughs> sometimes because you are not wearing the tie now so okay, yeah, sure, sure. all right so to do it on your hand you just cross this one here like that and you rope this one inside it it goes like that then Put this one here. You see that already? It's forming. Mm. And then yes, put it in there. So for those who don't know, um, he is the one who started Kansas 2020. Yes. Um, yeah, I think that was um, early um, January. Yeah. Yeah, early January. Um, yes. Jay so yeah. So we have our tie here. We have a bow tie here fixed there. Wow, that's that's nice. So this is the <laughs> best. Yeah. So that's the the handmade bow tie. So one thing about it is that um, the why I would recommend this over the already pre-tied ones is that there's a beauty of the imperfection of this bow tie. Mm -hmm. It's not supposed to be perfect. When you tie it, as in perfect means, like it's you don't have to. be to, an imp, like, It's supposed to be imperfect, perfect. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's supposed to be. The, the, the imperfection is what makes it stylish. Yeah. Have you understand? Get it. Uh -huh. When it becomes here exactly the same, then it's offsetting from the rule of style. <laughs> yeah, that's a point. So I mean, doing all these things, I, I, I this is the first. I mean, I would say this is the first time we are, most of us have seen something like this. Yeah. Um, someone into bow tie, um, couture, men's bow tie, couture. Yeah. I mean, for you, what has been the challenge um, picking up such um, a skill, a trade, someone would call it? What has been some of the challenges so far? Most, some people don't understand their, their style orientation of why they should go in for a self-tie bow tie. So I think that one too is a challenge because you have to always explain to people to let them understand why they should do a self-tie bow tie. 
probably you do a bespoke suit for like 2,500 cities. You can run averagely if you want a good tuxedo in the industry for a wedding. They're going to pay between 1,005, 2,500, depending mm -hmm. on the fabric you are choosing. You understand? Mm -hmm. So you can't say that you are going to, you want a cheap bow tie for that kind of. That is it's perfect. <laughs> somebody, like, somebody wants to have a good MC. Yes. But doesn't that, that is not really bothered about drinks. Somebody wants to um, have a good decor because that's what they are they are so perfect. So um before we we get into the next set of questions which we are about to wrap up, I uh, will go for a short breather. Then when we come back we we'll be wrapping up. Yes, and um, we'll see how best we can get other stuff going through. So uh, we want to know um, how many years have you been doing this? Um, any personality style so far? How many persons you start mentioning of personalities you have done? And how has the road been like so far? Okay, um, I'll say um, officially and unofficially, or unofficially. I mean. Officially, um, from 2020, that was when I actually started commercializing the, okay. the bow tie and the styling um, works. And back then, when I styled um, JSO, Trigmatic, for their weddings, I had not even brought the brand out there. Oh, okay. You understand? So, yeah. officially, I can say it's been a year. It's been a year. Yeah, it's yeah, been, been a year. From 2020, um, let's say, yeah, from 2020, let's say 2020. Yeah, I think good because you're so, starting a lot of like zeros or events. Yeah, I, so I, I, can, I remember 2019, that was when I started my logo and everything. So, early January, I styled. Um, my first client in um, Ta Taqwa, yes. No, Taqwa, sorry. Okay. It's Obed, yep. I styled him in Taqwa. That same month, in January 2020, I styled Abwaje and Anita, that was despite daughter. Oh, okay. And the following month, I did Kensi 2020 and a couple of others. So every weekend, basically, Today wedding, today weddings, for like okay, that. So now I get where the Kenzie wedding, Kenzie twenty. Oh, so it was a referral from. Yes, it was a referral from. So, um, yeah. So uh, yeah, from the spice yeah. daughters. Wedding. Yeah. So basically, um, you see, I believe in the power of community building and diversification. So whatever thing you think you are doing, I mean, you have people around you. Yeah. Your your large words. Um, any words of motivation, um, what or advice? I mean, you've, you've said a lot. I mean, you've said a lot. But when it comes to styling, a lot of youth, uh, someone who even want to venture into this, who knows? Yeah. Someone who want to venture into this. Someone who want to venture into something creative. Um, you you came here. You said that um, we should look at opportunities, create create opportunities yeah. out of a lot of things. So yeah. someone who wants to do something doesn't know how to start. I think, would they buy it? Would people purchase it? Would it create, be a difference amongst um, the, the arts? Well, I read a book by 50 Cent. It's called, I think his latest edition, Get Rich or Die Trying. I think one of the chapters is fear. Uh, yeah, fear is one thing that is actually crushing a lot of people right now. And the problem people are having is that they are so much comfortable in their fear. And they're so com much comfortable. People are in comfortable their, in their, their fear. fear. That's that's hard. Yeah. People are comfortable in their fear. You understand? For the fact that you think starting something won't work, it creates some comfortability in you. Mm. You understand? Yeah. And you, you you start telling yourself you will do it, but you never do it. The fact that you say you do it and that's you're comfortable, I hope you understand. Yeah. For instance, um, we, um, our parents were, um, they didn't, most of them didn't let us know certain realities, okay? For instance, 
you realize people waking up early in the morning, pick Trotsky to town, they go and sit by the roadside or working for people and they earn like thousands or maybe 60 or 80 cities in a day profit. I hope you understand. Yeah. And here's the case, they are comfortable with it. But there are challenges around them anywhere, everywhere. But they always dwell in fear of the fact that it is not going to work. And that is what is keeping them on the little income they are earning. I didn't say Mm. <laughs> That's the mindset. Mm. You see the point, you know. So we need to kill that fear. You need to always motivate ourselves, be disciplined, try to push. You have to push. Sometimes you need to jump. You need to always have to take that leap of faith. Sometimes when you have a vision to do something, you wouldn't see the end picture in 20 or 5 years. You wouldn't know what you want. It's not, it is formless. That's what the word. It's formless. It's like you want to, you 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 you, you climb in a staircase mm. from the bottom of it. When you are the, the bottom, you don't see the top. Mm. You only see the top when you start making baby steps, mm. and gradually, whatever is out there you to see the bigger is picture. coming clearer and clearer mm. and clearer and clearer. And I always, I always um, would say that we need to also look at, be mindful of the people. We share ideas with. That's our one of the greatest problems we have. The people we share ideas with. For instance, I'm working with you in a warehouse, packing and loading of stuff. At the end of the day, they give us 30 CDs each. That barely we can't see from it because it's a hand to mouth thing. We use it to eat. Yeah, <laughs> hand to mouth. Uh. So what happens is that I come to you, boss, Charlie. This job we do is not working. Let's find, let's get out of here. Then you tell me, Charlie, you know there's no work in the system. So this small one we do like this. Let's do it like that. You understand? You should know that, we should know that I'm, you are the wrong person I'm speaking to. Mm-hmm. And we have a whole lot of, a lot of people like that around us as a youth. Mm-hmm. Most of them, we call them friends. We party with them. When they bring ideas, they can't help us grow it. I hope you understand. Yeah, I, I, was, I, was, I, was telling, I was telling a friend sometimes that it is better for you to dine and drink or dine and wine with yeah. the same person that you'd, you'd share ideas and you work towards that idea. So, mm-hmm. was, I mean, once you struggle, you come back and you have fun with the same person. Yeah. But you dine and wine with somebody. And at the end of the day, where there's struggles, there's, that person is not nowhere to be found. So, uh, it butters the point that in success, you have to move with those that who are yeah. ready to move with. Yes, that is family. You create family around people. Because yeah. even the Bible said, family is not by blood relations, yeah. by the people that understand our philosophy. Right. So if you, Proverbs said, before two can work together, they have to agree. <laughs> so yeah, so the agreement is the common philosophy you have to share. Uh-huh. So if you are working with somebody and the person actually don't understand your ideas you are bringing and merge it with something for you, you have to run away from such people. Hey, thank you very <laughs> much, Jupeski. Yeah, Charlie. I'll just share one more thing. Um, I thought you, I thought you said one more thing. I want to. Share. I'm actually working on the book. Um, I call it the dynamics of style constraint. I'm trying to add to dynamics the, of style. The dynamics of style constraint. It's a book I'm coming out. I'm working great. on it. Great. Great. Waiting to launch it soon. Great. You know, I'm from academia. I need to try and create that great. value. Bring it. For to us, for me. us, you know that uh, for some of us, we are always there to support. Yeah. I mean, um, in as much as we are, we are, we are very cool friends and all that. We are also much more like clients yes, to the brand. Yes, I know. I appreciate yes, that. Yes. So it's the dynamics of style constraint. Basically, the forward actually explains what, how um, people, as you said, what the youth can also do. Um, what people can do to be on top of their style sense whilst maintaining a minimum budget. So it is a four quadrant kind of model I have actually uh, designed wow. i hope you understand yeah. and it's a four quadrant it's like the the graph yeah. x and y axis yeah. we have the four quadrants yeah. so at any given point every, each any person on earth will find himself 
in one mm. of the quadrant. Exactly. And in each of the quadrant, you have um, a specific purchasing ideas or certain type of rules, certain things you need to do to stay on your, your style game. Mm. It's coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> so we will be expecting yes, the book yeah. Um, yeah. pretty soon. Um, we also thank you for coming to me. We really appreciate it. I appreciate um, it. Too. The, the words of um, motivation um, to the youth out there too was great. Uh, you need to have a leap of faith and you need to see above yourself, have a substance. Be careful what the kind of friends you make because they make you. So thank you once again for staying tuned with us today, myself, Jared Odum, and my special guest, Joe Pesky. So, at the same time next week, stay tuned, shalom, and be blessed. You go feel the vibe. My experience, you go feel the vibe. Tell them, XVXV experience. Feel that experience. Odum bring that experience.